one kid once said to me, were you really a cat? <laughs> and I heard myself <laughs> say, just pull yourself together. <laughs> Dame Maggie Smith. What a character. What a woman. What a career. In film, television, and theater, she is an icon. She will always be an icon. And I have been reflecting on her amazing career, thinking about so many movies I watched that she was in when I was a kid. I mean, so many amazing projects going back decades and decades. And it was hard to narrow this down to the 10 greatest Maggie Smith performances. Keep in mind, these are kind of my favorites. You might look at number four or number two and be like, Really? Is that one of her very best performances in the movies? So we can go back and forth on this. I have my 10. You will have your 10. And we can talk about it. In remembrance of Dame Maggie Smith, here is my list of her greatest performances in the movies. Let's start with number 10, The First Wives Club. <clears throat> Fork. <laughs> Now here is an excellent example of a fantastic Maggie Smith performance in that she doesn't have a lot of screen time and she's playing a character that in the hands of a different actress we wouldn't have really noticed. Like it could have just been a so-so performance nobody thinks about or talks about anymore, especially when you have a cast like Goldie Hawn and Bette Midler and Diane Keaton and Sarah Jessica Parker the list goes on and on in this wonderful 1996 film. But Maggie Smith is so frickin' funny in this movie. What she can get out of an expression, a look, that part where they're falling down the building and Smith just like goes, <gasps> you know, like all of those little things that she does are hysterical. And then just her look, her hair, the way she says fork. The way she says fork to Sarah Jessica Parker, she is just such a comic delight in this movie. I have always adored her performance in The First Wives Club. Number nine, Downton Abbey. I mean you. You are the future of Downton. Now if I was also including television, this would likely be a little bit higher up at like number four or three or something. Obviously, one of her most iconic performances in film or TV is Downton Abbey, which aired for a few years before becoming two feature films. The first one came out in 2019, and the second one, which I believe was her second to last film, was 2022. I didn't see the second one, but I saw the first one. And what I loved about her performance is that in some moments, she's very funny, and then in some other moments, she's very emotional. Like, she gets to play all sorts of shades with this character in the first film particularly. She was obviously very comfortable in this role after having played it on television for many years. And I think this is probably her last really wonderful performance in the movies. I know she's in a couple things after this. But 2019, Downton Abbey, Maggie Smith is just fantastic. Number eight, A Room with the View. Well, my own wishes, dearest Lucy, are unimportant in comparison with yours. I am only here through your kindness. So you might know that Maggie Smith got a lot of Oscar nominations, tons of BAFTA nominations and wins. Like if you look at her awards list on IMDb, that thing goes very, very, very long. Like it is quite something. She has BAFTA award-winning performances I still haven't seen. I'll mention a couple of their titles at the end of this video. But one of her six Oscar nominations, her only one in the 1980s, is from A Room with a View, also starring Helena Bonham Carter and Daniel Day-Lewis, and quite a stunning cast. I watched this film a few months ago when I made my Helena Bonham Carter elusive Oscar video, and I was really taken by Maggie Smith in this. It's kind of a performance we've seen from her in other projects. Like, she's not doing anything extraordinary in this film compared to other movies she was making at the time or anything, 
but she is just so lovely, so captivating. She gets to share the screen with Dame Judi Dench. I mean, come on. Number seven, The Secret Garden. Go! I shall, if only to prevent you from harming yourself with this hysterical shrieking. So as I'm going to talk about in this video, I really did grow up with Maggie Smith in the movies. Like the very first films I remember seeing in a theater when I was like six, seven, eight years old, Maggie Smith is in a handful of them. And one I really, really loved at the time. I think I saw it twice in theaters. My grandparents wanted to see it, and so I went back a second time. It is so enchanting. Such a terrific adaptation of the beloved novel The Secret Garden from 1993. Again, Maggie Smith is not playing a character here. You haven't seen her play in other movies, probably. But she gets a lot to do with this supporting role. She gets to be funny. She gets to be feisty. She gets to be intimidating to these kids. It's not the flashiest performance by any means, but she has such a presence in that film I have always enjoyed. Number six, Gosford Park. Georgia. And it must be so disappointing when something just you know, flops like that. Now, the final Oscar nomination for Dame Maggie Smith was an early 2002 and Best Supporting Actress for Robert Altman's masterful ensemble film, Gosford Park, which also stars Michael Gambon and Kristen Scott Thomas and Emily Watson and Helen Mirren, who, in addition to Dame Maggie Smith, got an Oscar nomination in the same category that year. What a cast! What a beautiful movie. It's got humor, it's got danger, the mystery aspect is a lot of fun. This is director Robert Altman firing on all cylinders. He won the Golden Globe Award for Best Director, and I would think came close maybe to winning the Academy Award for directing. He never won a competitive Oscar in his long career, which still stuns me to this day. Thankfully, even though Smith lost that night to Jennifer Connelly for A Beautiful Mind, she has won a couple prizes, as I'll talk about coming up here. She is just such a dazzling standout in Gosford Park. I adore her performance in this movie. Number five, the Harry Potter films. <laughs> So I love these movies. I always have, I always will. There's not a bad one in the bunch. Eight films and they are all made with such a high level of craft. And what made them so much fun to watch like as they came out every year and a half or so was seeing all of these amazing actors get to re-inhabit these beloved characters. And one of my favorite characters was always Professor McGonagall. Like from the books, from the early films, how her character developed a little bit as time went on for Harry and Ron and Hermione. Like Maggie Smith was perfectly cast in that character. I can't imagine anyone else playing McGonagall in the movies. And some films she doesn't have a lot to do. Maybe she'll have a monologue here and there. But when I think now of my favorite Maggie Smith moments in the Harry Potter franchise, it's the last film. It's Deathly Hollows Part 2. She's not even in Part 1, but she gets a couple dazzling moments to shine in Part 2. First, when she is like battling Snape, and then that part where she makes that spell that helps protect Hogwarts Castle. And she has that beautiful line I have never forgotten. I was so happy to see Maggie Smith one last time in the final film play McGonagall. She did such beautiful work in that entire film franchise. Number four, Hook. It's time to tell you at last. Tell me what? How far back can you remember, Peter? Now this movie means a lot to me because it's one of the first films I remember seeing in a theater. It was the first time I ever saw a Steven Spielberg movie on the big screen. And yes, it was my introduction to Dame Maggie Smith. I must have seen this movie, let's see, it came out in December of 91. So I had just turned seven years old. 
And so seven-year-old me naturally assumed Maggie Smith was an actress in her 80s or 90s. That made sense to me because of the fantastic makeup job they did on Smith's face. Like, she looks really, really old in Hook. And so it made growing up and watching more of her film projects kind of perplexing because over the next decade plus, I would see her in movies and she looked the same age or younger. And then I want to say I was in high school, maybe college, where I was like, oh, she's not like 100 years old. It's like, like they made her up to look older for Hook. And that's why I was so confused as a kid. I know Hook has its haters. Many people feel like it's at the very, very bottom of Steven Spielberg's filmography. I'm not going to say it's one of the best, but I have always, always really liked Hook. I think it's much better than most people make it out to be. And I've always loved Maggie Smith's performance. Like her performance as Granny Wendy blended together with John Williams' masterful score. It just gives me the feels every time I watch this movie. She's not in a ton of the film. She's mostly in it at the beginning and at the end. But she makes the most of every moment. I love her interactions with Robin Williams in this movie. And to think now that they're both gone... Like, it gives me, it gives me some emotion, like, to think that they're both no longer with us. Because for a long time, when I was a kid, Hook was one of my favorites. I watched it over and over, and I'm just so happy Spielberg thought to cast Maggie Smith as Granny Wendy. I can't imagine anyone else in that role. Number three, California Sweets. If I win tonight, darling, it's not going to be an Oscar. It's going to be a Joe Pickman. Now, this is a very interesting role in her filmography in that in California Suite, written by Neil Simon from 1978, Maggie Smith plays an actress who's nominated for an Academy Award, and in the movie, she loses. But then for her performance in the movie, Maggie Smith won the Oscar for Best Supporting Actress. I think it's the only time, still to date, where somebody won an Academy Award for playing a character in a movie who's like up for an Academy Award in the storyline. Very meta to be sure, and even crazier I would say, even though Maggie Smith won two Oscars in her long career, this was the only time she was actually there when her name was called, the only time she made an Oscar speech. And it's a great one, it's brief, it's charming. She doesn't look like she thought she was going to win. And you know what? She deserved it because she is fantastic in this movie. She has such a great chemistry with Michael Caine in her mini scenes. And in a big ensemble cast, as is the case with Maggie Smith, from movie to movie, so many films she made with huge ensembles She's always the standout, and that was definitely the case in California Suites. Number two, Sister Act. What is your name? Dolores Van Cartier. Is that your real name? Yes, I happen to be a singer. Uh oh. <laughs> All right, I know. It's like, really? Is this the second best performance she's ever given in a movie? No. Like, of course not. But I bring in, like, my bias here, like, the movies I adore with my full heart. And when I was eight years old, I watched Sister Act on VHS over and over and over. Like, I wore that VHS tape out like no other film, I think, in my entire history. I found that movie so funny, so entertaining. Whoopi Goldberg is a riot in that film. And the way she plays off of Maggie Smith is just delightful. I really, really enjoy the evolution, the arc of Maggie Smith's character. When we're first introduced to her, she is like tough, strict, like she is not going to put up with any shenanigans from Goldberg. And by the end, 
the way she has softened and come to really care about her. Like it just always fills my heart with joy every time I watch this movie. I haven't seen it in a while, mainly because I basically know it by heart, having watched it over and over as a kid. You know, I think about how my parents didn't know I was gay when I was watching Sister Act a thousand times when I was eight years old. They should have known, right? It is just such a great movie from top to bottom. Wonderful performances. That soundtrack is just amazing. Like still to this day, just one of the best movie soundtracks ever. And Maggie Smith in that film, again, that could have been just a so-so actress who didn't leave much of an impression, but casting Smith for that role made it so very memorable and her scenes with Whoopi Goldberg just pop off the screen. Now before I get to my number one choice, a few runners up, 1965's Othello marked Maggie Smith's first Oscar nomination. She is fantastic in this Shakespeare adaptation from the mid 60s. Travels with My Aunt from 1972 also got Maggie Smith an Oscar nomination. And even though the movie itself is just okay, she is something else in this movie. Like it barely looks like her and all the clothes she gets to wear. This performance is quite stunning. Death on the Nile is a great Agatha Christie adaptation with a big ensemble and once again, often in scenes with the great Betty Davis, Maggie Smith more than holds her own. I also have to give a shout out to Divine Secrets of the Yaya Sisterhood as a big Sandra Bullock fan. I have seen that movie a few times. It's all right. It's not a great film. I think Ellen Burstyn is really good in it. Ashley Judd is very strong as well. And in a big ensemble, yet again, Maggie Smith stands out. She's got some really funny lines, especially in those scenes with Sandra Bullock. And the best exotic Marigold Hotel. I didn't see the second one, but I saw the first and she's very entertaining in that movie. Once again, with Dame Judi Dench and a fantastic cast. Maggie Smith made a lot of films in her last decade or so before she passed away. I do think that's probably the best one, although The Lady in the Van is also a lot of fun. And Tea with the Dames, which is just four icons talking about their lives, their craft, is quite something as well. Now, as I mentioned near the beginning of this video, there are some performances of hers that are very acclaimed that won BAFTA awards that I still haven't seen. One is from 1987, The Lonely Passion of Judith Hearn. I'm gonna try to check that out very soon. I have heard good things about her performance and the movie. And then she also won Best Actress at BAFTA for 1984's A Private Function, which I know very little about but I am excited, I don't know about you, to go through her filmography, pick out those titles I've never seen before, and just dig into some wonderful Maggie Smith performances that are brand new to me. And finally, that takes me to my number one choice. I don't think this is going to be a surprise. It's the film that won Maggie Smith, her one and only Best Actress Academy Award, 1969's The Prime of Miss Jean Brody. I am a teacher. I am a teacher first, last, always. Do you imagine that for one instant I will let that be taken from me without a fight? This is a magnificent movie. I have seen it at least three times throughout the years. I love movies about teachers. This is quintessential Dame Maggie Smith on screen. And I remember the first time I saw it, I think I was in college maybe, I was renting a bunch of movies that had won Best Actress at the Oscars, and I had never seen this one, and I was so taken aback to see Maggie Smith that young. I was like, maybe that's when I realized, oh, okay, she wasn't that old in Hook, because at the end of the 60s, she's actually a pretty young woman, and from her first scene in that movie, she just inhabits that character of Jean Brody. The way she has those testy encounters with the conservative headmistress, the way they butt heads, is just so much fun to watch. And the way she interacts with those kids, the way she gets them to really care 
about learning, about education, about arts, about ideas. This is one of the best teacher films ever made, I think. Maggie Smith gave the performance of a lifetime in the prime of Miss Jean Brody. I'm so happy she won the Academy Award that year for Best Actress. She wasn't there to accept, but there are pictures of her getting the trophy. And just what a moment in her film career. What an impeccable performance and what a great movie. If you are a fan of Maggie Smith and somehow you have not seen The Prime of Miss Jean Brody, go check it out. You are going to love it. And that takes me to the end here. Dame Maggie Smith, 1934 to 2024. You were one of my favorites. You always were a light in every film you appeared in. From the bottom of my heart, thank you, Maggie Smith, for all the gifts you gave us in film and television and theater. This world is not going to be the same without you. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and let me know in the comments below what are some of your favorite Maggie Smith performances, and we'll see you next time at the Awards Contender.